Okay, so remember from last time that uh, the differential of y is just a, a small, small change in y. So the, all differential means it's just a difference, uh, a small, small difference. Um, what we refer to as dy is the change in y on the tangent line, and delta y is also a change in y, but it's the change in y of the original function. Okay, but sometimes we use the tangent line because it's so much simpler than the original function uh, to approximate the change in y of the original function. Since they're so close to each other if we stay close to that original value of c. So, uh, for example, if we look at number 8, which is y equals 1 minus 2x squared. Uh, the original x is 0, and delta x, which is the same as dx, is negative 0.1. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, remember that uh, our, our delta y depends on how far away from the original x value we get. Uh, that change in x we call delta x or dx, it's the exact same thing. Whether we're talking about the tangent line or we're talking about the original function, the change in x is going to be the same. Uh, in the case of the one we're about to do, it's a negative uh, 0 0.01, so it goes that direction. But the delta x is the same. The dy, remember, is uh, can be found with this expression, f prime uh, of, of this c value, uh, times the change in x. Um, and that just came from uh, our discussion of this equation. We started with the point slope form. We exchanged y1 for f of c. That's the original y value, or that's a that's a, the y value of a point that is on the line for sure. Uh, then f prime of c. That's just the slope of the tangent line at c. And x minus c. That's the x value of the point that's on the line. That's how the point slope for point slope form works. Um, and from that, we came up with this equation of the tangent line for the general. Uh, equation of the tangent line, and we came up with, well, y minus y1 is just the change in y, or dy. Uh, and um, let's see. Yeah, this is the change in y. This is the change in x, d delta x or dx, and uh, this is just the slope. So we exchanged this for dy, we changed this for dx, and we found an expression to find dy. So we just take f prime at c uh, times the, the change in x, and that'll be our dy, and then we'll uh, compare it to delta y, and then we'll discuss how we find delta y. Okay, So dy is just f prime of c times dx, or f prime of x. There's an expression in the book that uses x, and that's the same thing. So dy, which we're trying to find, is f prime of x? Well, f prime, or y prime, is, we can see, negative 4x, and x is 0, times delta x, which is uh, negative 0 0.1. Uh, and we take negative 4 times 0 times negative 0 0.01, and we have a dy of 0. Um, and why is that? You can see here, uh, this is y equals 1 minus 2x squared. And this is the tangent line at x equals 0. So the dy is going to be 0. Um, so let's see what the actual delta y is going to be. To find the actual change in y, delta y, uh, we need to look at the actual function y equals 1 minus 2x squared and see, well, let's zoom in on this a little bit. We can see, let's get, so that we might be able to, there we go. So you can see that, uh, well, I hope you can see this on your screen. Uh, this is negative uh, 0.1, actually, so one-tenth of that, it's right about there, would be negative 0 0.01. Uh, and so the, the delta y would be the change in y from here down to right there. So not very much. It's not going to be much different from 0. Um, so the actual delta y 
is just equal to like y2 minus y1. So delta y is equal to, let's say, y of negative point, oh, it's negative point 0.1, not point zero 0.01, excuse me, negative point 0.1 uh, minus the original y value, which would be y of 0. So we have 1 minus 2 times negative uh, 0 0.1 squared minus 1 minus 0, or 1 minus 2 times 0 squared. All right. So this is 1 minus uh, 2 times 0 0.01, if we square 0 0.1. Uh, minus 1 plus 0 equals, uh, we got 1 minus 1, that's 0, so we have uh, negative 0 0.02 is the actual change in y. So our delta y was negative 0 0.02 and our dy was 0, which there's not a whole lot of difference between dy and delta y. Okay. So to find delta y, we just need to find the actual change in y, and dy is an approximation of that. If, as in number uh, four, 13, it says to find uh, the differential dy for this function, well, we know how to find dy if we work our way backwards here. Um, dy is found with this expression. And when it says find the differential, it doesn't give us any details. It's just saying find the general dy, the way that you would find dy uh, once you were given x and dx. So dy, again, is f prime of x times dx. All right. okay. We don't know what dx is. Uh, we obviously don't know what dy is, but we can find f prime of x. Uh, or y prime. So y prime is uh, the quotient rule, so low d high minus high d low over square root of what's below. So low d high minus high d low over the square root of what's below. I'll try and clear this up a little bit. We've got 2x minus 1 minus 2x minus 2, that's just distributing the 2 and the negative all at once, uh, over 2x minus 1 squared. And this is equal to, let's see, 2x minus 2x is nothing. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, so we get negative 3 over 2x minus 1 squared. And so this is y prime. This is the thing that goes right there. And so we have the general form of dy will look like this. And if we had a dx uh, and an x, then we would fill in x here. That would tell us what the slope was at x times dx, whatever that was, 0 0.01, negative 0 0.2, whatever. Um, so that's what it's asking for there. For, the, for dy, that is the general form of dy. Once you add all the details, you plug it in. OK, <clears throat> so now imagine there's a, some machine. Uh, and in goes some blue material, whatever it is, uh, and the gears turn and the things come down and whatever, and out of this machine comes a square. So this machine is pretty good, um, but it might cut the side lengths uh, a little wrong. The side lengths are supposed to be 12 inches. And 12 inches on this side, but it might be off by a little bit, so it might actually cut it to uh, an error of 1 64th of an inch. So the side length might be 1 64th of an inch too much or too little. Uh, so there's this 1 64th uh, possible error. Okay, so there's this thing we're going to talk about here called propagated error. And when you propagate things, you, you, know, you produce them. Okay? So this error in the side length propagates or produces also an error in the area of the square. 
so, you know, if, if we're the guy who's responsible for making the customer happy with these blue squares uh, and they want it to be a certain area, then we may want to know how far off that might be. Um, and we'll use differentials to approximate that. So um, area is a, is a function of the side. And you take the side and you square it. Okay. To use differentials to approximate this, dy is equal to, let's say, a prime of s times ds, the change in s. Okay. So dy is equal to, well, a prime is equal to 2s. Uh, so what is s? Well, the the target side length is 12. So uh, we're going to start at 12, at a side length of 12, and have a ds uh, of 1 64th of an inch to the right or to the left, positive or negative. Um, so here we want a prime of 12 uh, times ds, ds is actually either positive or negative, 1 64th of an inch. So dy is equal to, what is this, 12, 2 times 12 is 24, a prime of 12 is 24, times plus or minus 1 64th. So we have plus or minus 24 over 64, um, and See that is three eighths. So three eighths um, inches squared. The area could be off by uh, more or less three eighths of an inch squared. Uh, so that's something that the, the guy who's in charge of keeping the, the customer happy would be able to tell them approximately. No, this is approximate, of course, because the actual area, if you were to go a side length bigger, you would get uh, more area, right? And however much more area that is, it would be more than the area you would lose if you were to be off by a negative 1 64th of an inch, okay? Um, and obviously, this function isn't very difficult. So finding the actual change, uh, you know, possible change in uh, area, would not be a difficult thing to do. But with a more complicated um, uh, function, like the I don't know the volume of some strangely shaped uh, box, whatever, um, that that shape may be more difficult to calculate, or or whatever the the the, the actual value of the function may be more complicated to to calculate. Whereas the tangent line, since it's so close to the actual function to within 1 64th of an inch, that's so small, when you're not very far away from the original x value or s value, um, the, the tangent line is going to have a very close approximation to the original function. Um,